a cement retained implant crown. I have my model here. I have the 4.1 gold hex abutment. It's a plastic cylinder with a gold base. I have the lab screw and I have a wrench. I have my working model here. In the working model, I poured an analog that is going to duplicate the implant that is in the mouth. The uh, analog is in the die here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cylinder in position. It will just snap in place there. And as you can see, the occlusion is open because the cylinder is, is quite a bit long here. So what we do is we, uh, we cut these off, this plastic cylinder top off, to uh, roughly where we think the, uh, the occlusal will be at um, on our abutment here. And I'm going to go over to my handpiece and cut this off. And then I will bring it back over here to the model. We'll take a look at it and see if we uh, need to take any more off or uh, how it looks from that point on. Okay, now I've cut down my cylinder to the proper size. And any further adjusting can be, can be done when it's cast into uh, gold. So I'm just going to survey the uh, abutment cylinder and get an idea of how we're going to wax the abutment here. As you can see, we're going to build up the lingual, lingual here um, because it, uh, uh, the implant has been placed slightly buckly. But it's a, it's really a pretty good job. Centered pretty well. Shouldn't have any trouble there. And uh, looks like the draw is going to be very nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put wax all over the cylinder. Uh, you don't want to burn out these plastic cylinders without putting a uh, uh, flash of wax on the uh, on the plastic cylinder because uh, you may have uh, you may have some uh, cracking in your investment if uh, you just leave it in plastic. Uh, you'll have a bit cleaner burnout if you if you float some wax on on this plastic here. Um, also, what I'm going to pay attention to is getting wax all the way down to the implant base. Uh, we're going to have our margin subgingival here. When we make our crown, we're going to want to put the crown on top of this abutment, and we're going to want to hide that margin subgingivally here so that uh, it doesn't show in the mouth. So I'm going to um, light my Bunsen burner here and I'm going to lubricate this soft tissue model here. Or the tissue area and I will also lubricate the contacts of the adjacent teeth here. Okay, so I have placed the abutment back in 
to the uh, implant position on the model here and I'm going to use some inlay wax and just flow down as far as I can to the bottom of the base to the bottom of the abutment and the top of the implant base that makes sense now you may want to take your die out and wax if it's uh, if it's easier for you to do that uh, that will work just fine And I'm going to build up this lingual here. Okay, now I have flowed some wax all the way over the coping or the uh, abutment cylinder, plastic cylinder. Uh, built up the lingual slightly so that we will have. Uh, good support there for the uh, crown. A lot of this we can do in the framework of the uh, porcelain crown we're going to be making on top of the abutment. So um, really pretty simple. Um, it's as rough a rough wax uh, wax up here. Uh, what I'm going to do from this point now is um, I'm going to take the abutment, the implant abutment out. Uh, I never used a screw on this, just snapped it in place when I waxed it. And you can see the voids here. Um, you can see the top of the margin here now and you can see this void here where I wasn't able to flow wax down to this uh, base. So I'm going to flow that in now. Still using the same wax here. I'm using a, an, inlay way, uh, an inlay wax. Sometimes I use a margin wax doesn't matter that much. Whatever you like to use. Um, whatever burns out well. Now these margins are not subgingival, uh, they're just kind of a, a reference to the soft tissue model. Uh, once this is cast into gold, I'm going to uh, lower these margins with my high speed handpiece so that uh, they will be subgingival. So you just fill in the void there and you want to make sure that you don't flow any wax over over into the metal here. This needs to fit flush into your implant. So just uh, fill that in. Also make sure that uh, you don't have any undercuts. See how that is an undercut there. I'm going to carve that out and fill in some of these little voids here that I have that I couldn't really get to when I had it on the model.
Okay, I've finalized my wax up of the abutment here. And I'm going to sprue this up. I like to put the screw in during uh, this, this procedure um, just so that I can have a little extension here to hold onto. And I'm going to sprue like you would a uh, coping or a crown to uh, tip, cuss tip, um, to, to a bulky, bulkiest uh, part of your, of your abutment. Now we'll just uh, tack this sprue in place using a little inlay wax. Do not want to go inside the hole here. Um, stay away from that. And that's good. Now I'll cut this sprue off because um, I like to have about a quarter of an inch here. Um, also, just to make sure that the uh, the gold does flow uh, to my margins nice, I will put a little reservoir sprue right here. And I just used some uh, gauge sprue wax. Again, make sure that you don't flow your wax onto the metal of your abutment. Okay, there we go. Now I have a sprue base here, a former. I'll just set the uh, sprue in place here. Loot this with some inlay, uh, some um, utility wax. Okay, the abutment now is sprued. I've uh, looted wax onto the sprue former here, and I have my ring. I have a liner that I'm going to wet. <coughs> Make sure there's clearance. So of course, uh, this is uh, this is just fine here. Um, I'm going to be using High Noble to cast my abutment here. Um, I'm going to be using a um, high heat investment with the uh, proper ratio for the metal I'm going to be using, and that's uh, pretty much the wax up stage of this. Uh, we're going to move on now to uh, investing this. Okay, I'm getting ready to invest. Uh, I have my bow out uh, as well as a pack of investment and liquid. But I wanted to uh, note uh, something that's very critical when investing these abutments 
we want to make sure that we have an instrument on hand and that we flow our investment into the hole here and then it comes out the other side we don't want to leave um, uh, any air inside this hole here or it will uh, it will cast a bubble inside and it'll be very hard to get out and we we'll may even have to uh, redo the, the whole abutment um, so I want to point that out also um, I like to spray inside and the abutment with the debubbleizer making sure that I do get it down in the hole there and right before I um, invest I'll blow off the excess here with the compressed air